let's have a look at how to do a vector portrait using Google Draw. Start by opening a new file through your drive and we're going to insert a photo from our drive. So this can be a self-portrait that you have taken. It can be uh, one that's used filters or a photograph of a family member that you admire. If you need to, crop down this photo to get rid of any extra information around the background that you don't require. You need to make a copy of this photo so that you've got two on your screen. So resize it. and then edit, copy, edit, paste, and just place them beside each other so that you can trace from one picture and move it over the top of the other one. So you're going to use the polyline tool and you're going to use this polyline tool to trace around objects in your photograph. So I'm going to just start with a complete shape of my head and my face and my shoulders. And I'm going to move this over on top of my right hand piece. Click the select tool, move it across to cover up your right hand photograph. Double left click and here you can adjust your shape to make sure that you can cover up any areas that you may have missed in your initial tracing. Once you're happy with that, go back to your left hand piece and then start selecting areas. So I'm going to work on my shirt first and I'm looking at my shapes in terms of a mid-tone or my block color, my shadows and my light colors. So here I'm tracing around the entire shape first and I'm filling it in with my mid value. Just modifying that shape to fill in any gaps that I may have made. I'm now going back and looking for my shadow areas. So where are the darker areas? I'm selecting all of these at once by clicking and dragging um, and I need to unclick my photograph so just control and click the photograph to take it out of the selection so that I can move all of those shapes together at once. So it's just a little tip to make things a little bit faster if you're doing multiple shapes. Now I'm looking at where the highlights are so these are my third value so I've just changed the color there to my lightest value, lightest value. And then when I do my next shape, it will automatically fill that shape with the color that I've chosen. Once again, selecting them all, control, click the photo to remove it and move them all across at once. and then just moving them individually and modifying any shapes that I need to to fit into the spaces. I also need to modify my skin color. So I'm just going to select that and change it to an appropriate skin color. Add in my earrings. And once I'm happy with the overall shapes of my earrings, I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually do my eyes. So I've just zoomed in and if you've always already followed along on the bulldog tutorial you'll know how to do the eyes so start with the black pupil then trace around the color areas inside the iris and just keep sending them to the back after you've chosen your colors here i'm adding in a slightly darker color around the outside of my iris And I'm going to do the whites of the eyes. Now it's an idea to not do a solid white for the eyes so maybe just come up a step or two and I'm also going to add in some other shapes around my eyes so my eyelashes my eyelids that highlight in the eye which is really important as we know to give it life
and remember to look at the values of the shapes that you're tracing. So if it's a darker, darker area, use a darker value of the colors that you've chosen. So I'm now going to group all of these together. So select them all and then arrange or right click and group just so that I can move them across to the correct space. Now I can't see my photo underneath so I'm going to just move my skin out of the way for a little bit. Make sure my eyes in the right spot and move my skin back. You can actually just do that skin piece right at the end and then place it at the back. So I'm going to do my other eye now and then we'll move on to the hair area. Okay, once again with the hair, it's about looking at it in three tones. So mid, dark, and light. And as you move it over, just modify your edges so that it fits and covers where it needs to. I'm now just selecting the darker areas. My hair is slightly pink in this photo, so I'm running with the pink theme. And I'm just doing a lighter pink for my highlights. So it's just a case of continuing to go through and modifying and adding. You can go in as much detail as you want. Zoom into areas when you need to get closer, particularly when you're in doing the face. So I'm now starting on the face and I'm looking at it again in terms of shadows, mid-tones and highlights. So I'm looking at where my darker shadows are on my face, tracing around them and moving them across to my face. So it's just a case of continuing on and doing this throughout and you can build up as many layers as you want. You can put colors on top of each other and change the transparency of them if you want a bit of a smoother blend coming through. And you'll see later on as you're watching this video that on my left and right cheek, I put a transparent color over the top of uh, one of the values just to blend it out a little bit. So keep an eye out, see if you can pick up when I do that. So I'm coming up towards the end of tracing around the shapes and the values on my face. And it's at this point that I need to start getting a little bit critical and looking at where I need to add other shapes in or where I need to fix up some areas. I'm also adding a background in, so I've just inserted a square. I'm just having a look at what colors it is. I'm sending it right to the background and I've just deleted the photo from the right hand side there. Um, now here I'm just going through, I'm modifying some of the colors in areas because I don't quite like them. I'm modifying some of the shape edges just to fit in and moving bits around just, just to tidy it up and to change it up a little bit. So this is where it takes a little bit of your visual um, analysis, I guess, to go where can you add more, where can you subtract more, what needs to be changed. Once you're done with that, you can have a look at the colors, change those if you need to as well. And it really is just about refining and adjusting things. So I didn't like that orange background, so I've just changed it here. I'm just fixing up where the top of my head isn't quite matching up with the dark tones and just making sure that things fit in to each other. So 
I'm now naming it and I'm downloading it as a JPEG. I'm deleting the other photo off there and then I'm just going to download it again just so I've got the two examples of it with the face photo as well as by itself. And there we go, a vector portrait done in Google Drawing.